welcome. Legally Brief presents the Child Athlete Abuse Podcast. I'm your host, Judy Saunders. I'm a lawyer, mother, and survivor. I work with competitive athletes and their families who are confronting abusive coaches. This podcast is for parents and athletes who are fed up, dealing with fear, and searching for answers. While I hope you enjoy listening to this podcast, the contents are never a substitute for contacting and speaking directly with a licensed attorney who knows and understands your circumstances. Past episodes of the show can be found on my website, jsaunderslawfirm.com. And when you visit the website, have a look around. I've put lots of information there for you that will help answer your questions and will provide some options for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our monthly newsletter. If you're ready to speak confidentially with an attorney, please feel free to call me. You can reach me at 212-709-8141. And if anything in this show resonates with you, if you think it could be helpful to a parent, an athlete, a friend, share the episode. And don't forget to do two other things. Subscribe to the show. Also, leave a rating and a review. I read all of your reviews. All right, let's talk. I'm glad you're here and ready to listen. Bullying among competitive youth sports. Bullying is a relationship issue. It's a problem within relationships where there's an imbalancement of power. Bullying, once a child who is being targeted by a bully is in that situation, it can be incredibly difficult for that child to withdraw themselves, to resolve the issue. And it will require the intervention of either a parent or some other adult. Once the bully has established that relationship and has chosen their target, attempts by the child that's being bullied to stop it on its own are very rare. There's a study by the UCLA psychology department that says over 70% of teens have seen bullying occurring within a school setting and that the study further goes on to say that bullying will have a lasting effect on kids. You'll see such things as depression, anxiety, even violent behaviors and substance abuse. And while the study couldn't find that there was a clear link between a child who is suffering from bullying, engaging or making attempts at suicide, there is anecdotal evidence that will show that their being bullied can lead to some forms of self-harm. Now, what are the situations and what we're focusing on today is bullying that occurs within the athletic setting. And that could be on a soccer field, in a gym, or during the course of a competition. One way that you'll see bullying manifest and what it will look like in a athletic setting among youth sports is that students may try to, not students rather, an athlete, a child can try to use bullying to increase their value, increase their worth, and maybe move up, quote unquote, the social status by engaging in forms of bullying. They wrongly believe that this will make them look better in the eyes of a coach. It really, really seems to be that bullying can be almost like a disease and it could spread. It could spread and it could go and fester and harm not only the child that's being bullied, it also harms the individual that's carrying out this form of behavior, negative behavior, and those teammates that witness it. Bullying expert Mimi Ficus who did research for the Archives of Pediatric Adolescence Medicine, found that there are anti-bullying programs that can help reduce bullying. The first thing that has to be done is that bullying has to be taken seriously. Also, there has to be intervention on the part of an adult. It could also be another youth. It could be another teammate, but there has to be some type of intervention to stop this if the child, if the target can't do it alone. In competitive youth sports, however, there is an added obstacle of what if the coach either is actively involved in the bullying or passively doesn't object to the bullying? And also, what if the coach turns a blind eye? I've had situations where I've been consulted on 
instances where a coach may have used abusive behaviors to try to bring about a desired result or incentivize an athlete to achieve a certain goal. By doing that, the coach set a tone within the gym, set a tone that this behavior, unacceptable behavior, humiliation, degrading, berating an athlete is acceptable. Now, once you're the target, and I don't care if you're an adult, even worse, if you're a child and feeling even more powerless, but if you're a child and you're publicly humiliated, you don't want this feeling to happen again. So if you have a bit of strategic thinking about you and you witness a teammate being humiliated and berated, you may think even subconsciously, how do I get on the good side of this coach? How do I stay on the good side of this coach? Some athletes may just you know, do whatever it takes to stay in good graces, do more, try harder, exhaust themselves. Some athletes may go one step further unconsciously because they're trying to look for a way to survive themselves and not endure this type of emotional injury. And they may say, well, what if I join in berating another athlete? What if I myself follow in the footsteps of this coach and engage in acts of bullying. Unbeknownst to the child, they may not have the maturity to understand that this behavior is wrong. And moreover, they're watching the very adult, the authority figure in their presence engage in this behavior. So what is a parent to do? What is a child to do? Maybe you as the parent, your child has started to give you hints or bits of information. It can be hard for a child to articulate and they may be even afraid to tell you that they're the target of bullying because they may know that if they tell mom or dad, then the repercussions is mom, dad is going to confront the coach, maybe confront the parents of the bully and this will cause further problems for them at practice. So a child may not even say something, but there may be signs, like I was telling you before, depression, anxiety, sadness, withdrawal, disruptions in sleep, eating, maybe crying, not wanting to attend practice. So we're presented with this problem of if the coach is also either the bully, bully or not intervening to stop this behavior within the athletic setting, what are you to do? I spoke recently with Olympic swimmer, Catherine Starr. Catherine swam twice in the Olympics in the 1980s for Great Britain. And Catherine echoed a sentiment that I share, and it's called being in integrity, an athlete being in integrity with themselves. Or put another way, and the way that that resonates with me, is being aligned with your inner self. And what that means is that there is a truth about what has to be done, even in these difficult situations, even in these situations where it is not fair and it's not right. Being in integrity with yourself, being aligned with yourself means that the only answer in some situations is to leave, report, leave, and remove yourself. Remove, and in this case, remove your child. So report the incident, remove yourself, and doing that It may be a decision of immediate removal, or it could be hopefully a more hopeful situation where after it's reported, the situation is remedied, the coach, you know, understands your child's distress and takes steps to stop it. Maybe the coach is not fully aware of the impact that it had on your child. We have always in this country and everywhere had a culture when it comes to sports, even youth sports, youth, amateur, professional sports, suck it up, toughness, warriors, gladiators. It's always been that sentiment when we come to athleticism. So maybe the coach had no idea that this was negatively impacting your child. And in that case, reporting it, having a discussion, being very clear about what you expect and having allowing your child to also voice their opinion may remedy the situation. However, if it's a pattern and it's a pattern that you recognize that you are understand, then the solution is 
removing yourself, removing your child. There are always going to be situations where we say to ourselves, this is not fair. My child is being bullied. Make the bully leave, kick them off the team. But if you continue to butt heads and you continue to have a situation where your child is absorbing toxicity and you see that there will be no remedy, regardless of the time investment, regardless of the money investment, the child will have to be removed from that situation. And that will serve the ultimate purpose of showing your child, one, that their complaints are taken seriously, and two, it will help them practice staying aligned with themselves, with the truth that's within them, and staying, as Catherine Starr says, staying in integrity with the athlete within. Bullying has to be taken seriously. It's not just a sport. It's not the way that things are done. If the treatment, bullying between teammates, if this had happened, say, with an adult in an adult relationship in a home, we would call it child abuse. If it had happened and occurred between at a nursing care facility, between a patient and a nurse or a nurse's assistant, we would term that elder abuse. And I'm giving you these labels and these names to show that they're your child's feelings and your child's complaints and what you observe. Maybe your child is not telling you directly, but you were observe. These are valid and it's termed abuse. Just because it's among, you know, similar age groups doesn't mean that it's not abusive behavior. We just call it bullying. Maybe to take it more seriously, we'll call it bullying abuse. I know that words matter and you can, things can seem less serious if they don't, if they're not given certain terms or they're recognized under the law. But abuse is abuse, regardless if you called it child abuse, elder abuse, or some other term or, you know, partner violence, it's abuse. When you learn about the situation, when you learn about the abuse, as I was mentioning before, it's not only harmful to your child who's being targeted, it's harmful also to the bully, but it's also harmful to the teammates that witness it. The eyewitnesses to abuse also suffer the residual effects of that trauma. Seeing your teammate being humiliated, seeing them being called names, it changes you. It changes your feeling. When we use that word toxic environment in the law, so many times we see that word being used in reference to cases of employment discrimination, workplace discrimination. And it just describes the idea that constant negativity, constant abuse, verbal, psychological, it leads to a souring and a toxicity in the very air. And that affects and impacts individuals. The solution of being aligned with yourself as a parent and then modeling that alignment to your child, that being able to show that there is truth and what they have experienced is valid, is the essence of being with and having integrity within yourself in the athletic setting and in life period. Beyond doing that, and that really is the North Star, that in a relationship where your child is experiencing bullying on the team by teammates, that is the North Star that your child will follow in that setting to remove themselves and in every other setting throughout life. Here are some other things that you'll consider and think about when you're transitioning and removing your child from bullying situations. Because you are you the parent and your child is learning how to be aligned with themselves and truthful with themselves and an athlete and as a human, they and their complaints about the bullying are going to be taken seriously, as I said before. You're going to have situations and start now practicing speaking with our children, both coaches and parents and other people that support. We're going to teach our children how to stand up for themselves. Many times this will come in the form, and it may not be easy for the target of the bullying to stand up, 
But we can start talking to our children who are involved in athletics about what to do if they're a bystander, what to do if they witness the bullying. For example, we can role play one or two times when it's appropriate. I know just so many times, like my kids, you know, they are 14 now and 16 and want very little to do with conversations. One way that I always find to get their attention is when they're not on their phones is when we're in the car. When we're in the car, we can engage in some conversations and that may be the perfect opportunity to just, you know, have a very casual discussion. Hey, you know, have you ever seen or what do you have any ideas of how you would handle it if you saw a friend, if you saw a teammate being targeted, being bullied by another teammate, being pushed around or humiliated by the coach? What would you do in that type of situation? Teach our kids, teach our athletes how to be good bystanders. And maybe that includes if they don't feel comfortable intervening intervening at that moment, but by telling an adult outside of the situation. Many times we know that bullies back off and they walk away when someone else intervenes, when someone is saying and pointing out the bad behavior. It doesn't feel so good to the bully to know that they're not being supported in their bad acts. When we initiate these regular discussions with our children, we teach them how to treat others and how to handle bullying if they experience it and then also if they observe it. There are great ways to have these types of conversations. One is in the car. One is if we see that they're upset, maybe after practice, don't not necessarily pressing the issue because we know that if we press so many times, our children, just like adults, we clam up. But in a less intense situation to have these conversations. Another way that we can, if you have a suspicion that your child is being bullied by a teammate, I've had situations where I know that parents then get involved themselves. If they have the time or the ability maybe to take off a day from work or to pass by the gym, maybe leave work early one day to maybe get your eyes on what's happening, on the situation. Not only your eyes, but also how does it feel when you walk in the gym? What is your tension level? What is your stress level? What are you seeing on the faces of the athletes and the teammates? If you get to this situation, looping back what I was saying before, if it's a situation where you see, you know that your child, or even you know that another child Just like we're telling our kids to be good bystanders, parents and adults, we also have to be good bystanders. If we see another child being humiliated or bullied, and we know it, you know it when you see it, we ourselves as adults, we have to stand up and say something. And that could be saying it directly to the coach, privately pulling them apart, saying, you know, I'm not really sure what I just saw, but I know by looking at the face of child A or B that it didn't look and didn't feel right. It may be directly having a private conversation with that child's parent. If you know that it's happening, what is the saying that we see everywhere? If you see something, say something. When you stand up, we are modeling these ways for our kids how to have a healthy athletic experience. I've had a situation, I've had situations where instead of being good adult bystanders, instead of standing up, instead of speaking up, it seemed to be a more strategic decision for parents to themselves look for or curry favor with a coach that is engaging or maybe looking away when there's bullying going on on the team in the gym. And that looks like parents knowing, saying to themselves, maybe it's a form of subconscious behavior. And it would look like a parent being extra nice to the coach, maybe bringing the coach or taking the coach to dinner, but trying to get into that inner circle. And by getting into the coach's inner circle as an parent, as an adult, by extension, you're then hoping that your child is treated with better favor and is not targeted by either bullying by the coach or by a teammate or ignored. That also serves no good in the long term. That's a short-term solution. The changes in behavior 
the shift and ending this imbalancement in this negative relationship that's established by bullying is only stopped by a direct frontal highlighting the wrong, frontal attack, saying that this is wrong, it should not go on. And if, as I was saying before, reporting it, if reporting it doesn't happen, then it's the time to act with your own inner integrity because you know that it's wrong and it's the time to leave. These are decisions that are never easy. And so many times there is I concede there is an investment in time, there's an investment of money, and there's also that prevailing anger, frustration, and many times just straight out rage. You're upset. You're upset. Why does my child have to leave? Why does my child have to endure this and then have to go look for another team, have to endure other tryouts, and then maybe have to, I have to now as the parent think about how to be strategic so that my child doesn't look like they've done something wrong. Going to another team, will there be conversations between coaches? So many times when you get into the world of more competitive and elite sports, it's a small campus, so to speak. Coaches know each other. Teammates know each other. You're playing against the same teams and you don't want to disrupt your child and move your child. But the hard thing about bullying, the hard thing about being targeted is that many times you're going to have to act with what's right, act with the undisputable truth that you may have to leave if whomever is in charge, that authority figure is not willing to remedy and stop the situation. So reporting, removal may be the way. And the North Star is to stay aligned with your truth. When you see bullying, when you see toxicity in the gym or on the field, you have to speak out. We have to model these behaviors for our athletes and we have to use the North Star of being aligned with ourselves. Bullying is wrong. Bullying is abuse. It can happen among teammates. It happens so frequently on the field. It's never, it wasn't acceptable decades ago and it's not acceptable now, but we'll only see these shifts when individuals act with integrity and when they speak out and we'll start to see a change. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I enjoy your comments. I enjoy speaking with you directly. You know where to learn more about me and more about my practice by going to jsaunderslawfirm.com. And we know that every situation is unique. If you want to learn or if you want to talk to me rather about your unique circumstances, about instances of bullying and other obstacles that you and your child are encountering on their journey to become an elite athlete and also more importantly to becoming a whole human you can always reach me at 212-709-8141 always a pleasure to have this conversation with you take care and enjoy the rest of your day All information and content in this podcast is provided for entertainment purposes only. Nothing in this podcast shall constitute legal advice and shall not create an attorney-client relationship. This information is general and may not be applicable to your particular circumstances. You should review your particular circumstances with an attorney. All liability with respect to actions taken or not taken based on the contents of this podcast is hereby expressly disclaimed.